Hey, good morning guys. Thought I'd get my video out of the way. Sunday. Just woke up not too long ago. It's beautiful outside. Almost one short weather. Alright, let's get this. Um, so this question has been coming more and more um, in the last couple of weeks. And they come in different forms. The latest form is from a gentleman called John M. And he basically said that once you build out the web presence and authority, what's preventing the client from canceling on you? Um, pretty valid point. So I'm going to try um, and answer this question. Probably this is the only question I'll answer. Okay. Just keep it concise. I'm going to try to see if I can nail this in the coffin. Because um, the other ways to tackle this is... Um, like you know, it's 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 like you're building an agency with a you know in a pocket with a hole in it, right? Filling water, and then the clients keep dropping. And other people say that you know the churn is churn rate's too high. It's all the same stuff, right? It's like um, pointing at the same shit, but at different angles. Ugh. All right, I'm gonna make my breakfast soon, so let me see if I can really make this in one time. All right, guys. Damn, my hair looks. Not not even normal normal weird. It's like damn weird weird. Um, fuck. All right. Okay, let's start here. So there's a couple ways to answer this question, right? It's this with, with churn rate thing, and one is probably like you know logical and the the, the way I should answer it, which is um basically share with you guys the numbers that I see. Right, like um, lately, I have a lot of fun crunching out numbers. Like, like you know, if I get a bunch of clients and I see, like you know, what's their long-term profit? What's their profit if the retention um, is this level? If the retention is that level? Uh, what's the profit if, like, I can um, blah blah blah, all kinds of shit? You know, I get great pleasure out of this. Right, I'm just with my calculator doing this shit for like a while after I get a bunch of clients, and I love it. And I can bomb in all those numbers to you guys. And it will make sense. It is all true numbers, and it will, you know, you'll feel that uh, you'll feel the excitement out of it. But I'm not gonna go that route, cause you guys can already see that. You guys can already see the scale in this, right? So the route I'll go is, what, um, what basically it comes down to, the root level, where I come from. What I see this all as, and I hope that would kind of explain, right? All right. So it's like this. Less than two years ago, I was somewhere in South Bronx, door knocking buildings in a community where half, if not more, people was either on welfare or um, really does not even have the main like necessities in life secure. Well, I wouldn't want to say necessities in life in that way because really in America, even when you are like at the bottom, bottom, you still have like shelter and food and stuff. But anyways, the point is um, they, they couldn't afford much stuff, right? Okay. And they have way more kids than they can feed. That's for sure. And I was trying to sell them a product which they don't even get the get to see or feel any kind of benefit of in their entire life until they die. The kids get to see it. Life insurance. So it wasn't easy, right? It was not easy. It was like six days a week I was working there. Um, sometimes from like noon to 9 p.m. and sometimes from uh, 7, 8 o'clock to around like um, 9 p.m. Right, it was it was long days, and it was I didn't have a car at that time, right? So mind you, I was taking buses and trains with this app called Transit, um, all day. So coming from that and stepping in an industry where you can get three people to say yes, and you're making 72 grand a year, is in of itself insane to me. 
Product is two thousand dollars. Three people say yes, yes, yes. Boom, seventy two grand. That environment is just like another whole different world, right? Um, and obviously, oh, there's all this stuff like, oh yeah, they could cancel. Oh yeah, what well, you can't this that um, all this stuff. But the fact that it's possible. Right, like when I saw that early on, right, I didn't understand all this business stuff, and honestly, like, I still don't understand all of the business stuff. I think it's pretty clear if you watch my videos. Um, not a, not like I don't, not really a business guy, right? Um, it's pretty clear. Not too long ago, I didn't know how to do my taxes. Um, not too long ago, I didn't know how to put together a contract. I still don't know how to put together a contract properly. <laughs> What I'm trying to get, get at is the first thing you have to put some understanding to in this whole thing. Well, and, and this is not just the SEO, you know, client SEO. I, I guess this is kind of like to all these kind of models, right? Is the shit is insane. The, the, the scale you're able to have in, in these things, you know, um, is, is ridiculous. I talked about in a video not too long ago where um, the you know a couple of, of the main things excuse me, excuse me, a couple of the main things that you you know you should focus on overall umbrellas of things you should advance at as a person to kill it in this industry and there were something like um, you know first of all like like you know actually the fulfillment a person who can go through I said five ten courses take action, be one of the underdog students within the courses so the owners really feel a personal um, responsibility to give you some extra tips, help you out because they see you're like, you know, taking action. There's always these guys in any group, right? There's those few people who are to really take action, the ones who are asking 90% of the questions in the live webinars and stuff like that. And if you're in that way, you know, most of the major things out there, you will get towards a point where you have a product where you at least know what to do, right? To bring in results. That's like given. Then on the other side, if you take sales like a skill, not something that, you know, you just like fiddle and it's supposed to work. And if it doesn't, you just like, okay, that doesn't work. Let me go to the next thing. No, you take it as a thing that you understand that you have to know how to communicate with people and, you know, and then use what you have in this time and age, whether it be the telephone, technology, email, whatever it is, one of the ways you should get to a point where you're at least decent or intermediate at it, that you can attract clients using that medium. Like it just, if you can see it in that way and you see it as a skill you have to develop and improve, then you will be on your way to bring these two things together. That will get you, get you to a 10, 10K per month. After that, you become a systems guy. Take a, take a step back and you can start to become the type of person who believes in processes and, 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 and creating a structure where other people can step in with, for lack of better terms, far less understanding of the product or anything, and they can do what you would do in, um, you know, VAs and all that shit, right? Systems. These three together, I don't know, 30, 40 kids. And then kind of where I'm just stepping into now, which is the hiring stage. This I touched on briefly in the last video, which is going to be uh, what I like to call is like bringing in kingsmanship. Right, it's from that book that I love. Um, and that's basically being able to put actually elite level people together for this entire system to work so you can get towards a, like a high performance, right? One of the best performing, let's say, products in this space. Guys, like think about it. It's not that fucking hard. Yes, there's all this difficulty and all this retention and stuff like that, obviously I get it. I share with you guys times I was scared. There was a time I was so scared. Like a guy, a client would be calling me and literally my heart rate would go up because I'm so scared. Like if I lose this guy, this is one third of my income. What is he gonna say? What is he gonna do? We're gonna do all this shit. And that didn't even go away to like 15, 20 K or more, I would say honestly. It's only until you're like confident, you know, like I've stepped in and out of selling enough times that to know that okay every time i fucking push the pedal shit's gonna happen and once you get to that point you're not as you're just not as scared because you know every time you step in 
it's gonna happen. I know that no matter what happens, if I step in, if I like get pissed and I step in and I'm like, okay, gonna sell hard as hell this month, I know shit's gonna happen. So without going into that part, um, the point is, what I was saying is, think about it. The shit isn't that difficult. It's hard, but there's a lot of moving parts. SEO is a product, there's a lot of moving parts, but if you really bring it down, it's still quite fucking easy. This is the point that I um, that that I, I think what drives me. <laughs> let me let me just try to nail it. Okay, so we pick an industry. Let's say in the home services, where there's you know generally speaking not that much crazy things going. All right. You put together a product from your understanding and you're learning more from these groups. You're learning and growing as a person who's, who's selling. You're, you're systemizing this entire process into processes so VAs and everything can take care of it. And then you're hiring or, or getting together elite level people after all this is uh, uh, done, these three things, to make that product. And gearing it all towards just one industry. The bigger companies are not even trying to be performance. Think about it. This is a fucking opportunity here. Like, the bigger companies are not even giving a shit about performance. That's the most beautiful thing. Town Square, Haibu, uh, Web.com, all these companies. I'm just saying for my industry, right? They, they're not even caring about it. They have cookie cutter systems that's put together just to barely have their retention high. Probably reporting is the best thing they're at in the fulfillment side of shit. Long story short, their room for a sales reps, okay, their room full of people calling is far bigger than their room full of people doing SEO. I guarantee fucking tea. And what that spells out is an entire wave of local businesses that just doesn't get results. If we're able to laser down to one industry and build this entire four to five level of growth for a person, communication, sales, understanding a skill and having the willpower to learn a skill and put it together, stepping back and building process and systems, managerial growth for yourself. It all comes down to yourself, right? Like these are all things. One day I'm going to walk away from all this and it's going to be things I do. I know how to sell. I know how to um, um, uh, learn a skill and put it together. I know how to manage people. That's the things I'm going to have left, right? And some money in the back. Um, the point is, you put this all together and, and nail it down to one industry, you're gonna get there. It's gonna get to a point where things are gonna blow up. And I, th I don't think I'm even there yet. I'm talking about a point where the, 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 you know, everything's systematized and it's performing at an elite level that like only, let's say, a few companies are doing it for that industry at that level. And you're gonna have a name for yourself. I want to be able to walk into places and charge people five, possibly even more K per month for more or less the same product. And it's going to be fucking awesome. The skill is going to be ridiculous. And it's going to be a, coming from a level of authority. So, all in all, that's the way I wanted to answer this question. It's, it's more of an indirect way. I could, like I said, I didn't go into all the numbers. I'm like, if you guys guess this and the retention falls up in the, you know, turn it here, then you'll still be a profit. All that stuff, numbers is true. You guys can see that stuff. I pull in 100 grand this year without even starting to sell. January I didn't sell, February I didn't sell, March I didn't sell. I mean, March by the end, I, you know, started to sell it. But the point is, yeah, I was making 30K a month. And even if I don't sell, 30K a month comes in, right? So how bad can the retention really be? That's what I'm saying. I'm not even even going by average retention, right? If you're losing, like they say, 30%, 25% of your client base, but you have your systems in place, like you should, or at least attempting to be at a position where you have those things in place, you're going to be fine. You guys like can see that, literally. So the way I wanted to, the thing I wanted to show you guys is just this. Forget about all the numbers. Just look at the things that's possible, the opportunity that there is right now. 
people talk about, oh, you know, the good old days, 2014, 15, you could just, like, you know, build this and a few things and it ranks. In my opinion, I think this is the good, good days, good old days right now. Three, four years from now, I think people are going to be talking about these days right now. Oh man, you could just have a few dedicated VBNs or whatever, like whatever it is in the fulfillment side. I would say in the sales side. Oh man, in 2019, 18, you could just have like, you know, scrape some lists, start calling some people and boom, you could scale the shit up like this. I honestly feel like that. And that's what drives me. It's just that it's it's that feeling that the next big blow up and move is right around the corner. It's not years ago, away. It's not even six months away. It feels like it's right there, right? Oh man! Once I just get this person in place and this, um, um, you know, I get an assistant who's gonna be to take care of this. Holy shit! The, the fucking like right now we're talking about getting an assistant and me and my girlfriend are drooling, taking walks, talking about all the stuff that's gonna be, you know, all off our plate and how much time I'm gonna have to do the other stuff. And it's just like the excitement is from literally the things that are on its way right now, right? From the fulfillment side, oh my God, once, oh, forget it. We get this network in place, the results are gonna start getting now with like, like these level, you know, much less moves we make, oh my God, forget it. These things that is right around the corner, this feeling is what I go for. And having the freedom to put the puzzles together. Like, you know, you don't like something doing, okay, then make a system for, for it so somebody can else in place. Like, having the freedom to have that kind of control and putting the puzzles in and out, messing up and then, you know, rethinking whatever is so pure. It's so free that I, it, it gladly gobbles up any of these other little fears of retention and this or that. That's pretty much it guys. I mean, your biggest fear should not be retention. Your, your biggest fear should be, um, I mean, not your biggest fear should not be, oh, this model has churned it too much or that model doesn't work or that model this and this. Your biggest fear should be you'll be in the same place next year. That's it. Your biggest fear should be that you know, one more year will go up and you're going to be sitting in 2020 thinking, oh, um, which model has retention? Which model has this, that? Should I go affiliate or not? Obviously, all these models work. It's just going to be about you. You can see that last year, it's a couple thousand dollars barely skipping by 30K. This year, fucking towards a million dollar agency. It's nuts, right? Outpacing whatever those other little fears is, right? That's what it's about. So I'll leave it at that. Hope, hope, that, hope that kind of paints the entire um, thing about this. Peace.